The case of State versus Gladstone is our introduction to the subject of the mens rea, the culpability of accessorial liability. The facts of Gladstone are roughly these. It begins with an interchange between Gladstone, the defendant, and Thompson. Thompson asks Gladstone to sell him some marijuana. Gladstone answers that he does not have any to sell and suggests Thompson might buy from Kent. Gladstone furnishes directions and Thompson proceeds to buy marijuana from Kent. Gladstone is charged and convicted for the crime of selling marijuana. But Gladstone did not sell anything to Thompson. The prosecution's case is that Gladstone acted as an accessory to Kent's sale. Gladstone's conviction is reversed on appeal. We want to understand why. A casual glance at the court's opinion could suggest that the prosecution fails because there is no evidence of any nexus between Gladstone and Kent. A careful read reveals, however, that it is possible to be an accessory to a crime committed by a total stranger. Consider this hypothetical. If an aging radical customer trips a guard to allow an unknown bank robber to escape, is there accomplice liability despite lack of nexus? The answer is yes. Nexus only functions as one type of evidence of the accessory's purpose to aid the principal. Evidence of purpose, however, can take other forms, as in this hypothetical. What is evident is that the purpose of the aging radical is to assist the principal. The Gladstone Court quotes the words of the eminent Judge Learned Hand in the case of United States versus Peony. In order to aid and abet, the defendant must in some sort associate himself with the venture, participate in it as in something he wishes to bring about, that he seek by his action to make it succeed. All the words used, even the most colorless, a bet, carry an implication of purposive attitude towards it. This is the culpability that must be shown, purpose. In Gladstone, there was no evidence that the defendant cared one way or the other whether Thompson bought from Kent. There was a failure of proof of purpose, the culpability element. There was evidence that might warrant a jury in concluding that Gladstone knew he was facilitating a sale by Kent. The so-called peony requirement articulated by Judge Hand demands more. Is that asking too much? An early draft of the relevant model penal code provision lowers the level of culpability needed to convict an accomplice. A person is an accomplice of another if acting with knowledge that such other person was committing or had the purpose of committing the crime, he knowingly, substantially facilitated its commission. Knowledge, not purpose. There was an uproar when the tentative draft came up for debate in the American Law Institute. In short, it seemed to a number of members that knowledge set the bar too low. The sales clerk portrayed here might be convictable of murder as an accessory under the tentative draft, despite the likely fact that the clerk was indifferent as to what the buyer did. Under the tentative draft, the clerk would be convictable even if he would rather the buyer didn't commit homicide. The peony requirement was therefore restored in the official draft. A person is an accomplice of another if, with the purpose of promoting or facilitating the commission of the offense, he, etc., etc. Purpose. Some courts disagree, at least where homicide is concerned. 
In United States versus Fountain, a Seventh Circuit case, uh, the court wrote, we hold that aiding and abetting murder is established by proof that the supplier of the murder weapon knew the purpose for which it would be used. This was a case in which a prisoner knowingly facilitated the killing of a prison guard. And it could be that Judge Posner's declaration would not be applied in a commercial context, even in the Seventh Circuit. For the most part, the Peony rule prevails. The prosecution must show that it was the defendant's purpose to aid the principal in the conduct constituting the crime. <laughs>